They can't stay healthy, can they? Players getting hurt all over the place. Tuesday's games, there were nine of them on. Let's recap what we need to know for fantasy basketball. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. Indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and no, I knew that. I didn't get an opportunity to see him play when he was with the club, but I definitely knew that. I'm also the lead fantasy analyst at basketballmonster.com and you can find me on Twitter as always at redrock underscore b-ball, on TikTok at redrock underscore b-ball, and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Thank you for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free. We're available on all platforms, so go and hit the thumbs up. Thank you for doing it already. If you love that, subscribe, bells, comments, blah, blah, blah. You know what to do. We've got a lot of stuff to cover, so let's cover it because we are deep in the thick of Week 19 fantasy playoffs for some. Others, it's coming. End of the Roto season is definitely coming. We are less than six weeks away from the uh, end of the NBA's regular season. So let's get some news going. What happened? Well, Derek Rose and Zaire Williams both have back injuries. At least three weeks for Derek Rose. At least four weeks for Zaire Williams. You know what I'm going to tell you? They're not coming back like that's it for them. They're not playing. There's no way. Especially Derek Rose. Maybe Zaire sneaks back in, but they're, they're relatively done. That does help Johnny Concha. It does help Luke Kennard. But how do you trust this team? You can't. Like That's the thing. You just can't trust what they're going to do on a game-by-game -game basis. They've upgraded Jaron Jackson to questionable for the next game. Jordan Goodwin's status remains a consistent mystery. They're going to cycle in other 10-day guys. It's all going to be a mess. It has been a mess. It will continue to be a mess all the way through. I am pretty confident. Scoot's out again tomorrow. No real update apart from that he's out. DeAndre Ayton was questionable before the last game. He's gone back down to doubtful. I did think that this might cost him a little bit of time with a hand ligament thing. Uh, yeah, so no real clarity on that. They have listed both Matisse Thibel, all three of Matisse Thibel, Tamani Kamara, and Jeremy Grant as questionable. Oh, who knows who plays? They are quickly, the Portland Trailblazers, Trailblazers quickly becoming the new Memphis Grizzlies or the same Memphis Grizzlies or Memphis Grizzlies 2.0, however you want to say it, in that we just don't know who's going to be available game by game. And the Jazz are going to be the same because Taylor Hendricks has a toe sprain. He's out at least a week. Let's push that to two weeks, I'd say. I do think Hendricks will return, but you can't hold him. They've got a really small, um, a small volume of games over the next 10 days or so. I don't know when he's going to be back. He's not good enough anyway. Move on. Larry Markinen's out. Walker Kessler's out again. So their front court is Yurt Seven, John Collins, and who else? It's Luka Sharmanich. It has to be. There's nobody else. So Sharmanich actually, unbelievably, is turning into a pickup. And I'll tell you, at the end of last season, he was one of those hidden silly season legends in April where there was a little stretch of time where he had 12-team value. We might be getting that up here right now. I don't know that we are, but we might be. So just keep an eye on Sharmanich. And I worry about the future of Yaka Pertl. Dislocated finger, no fracture, and now he's going to see a hand specialist. Ugh. Yeah, not good. I don't know that he's a drop, but I do think that this could be um, this could be a subtle end to the year. But obviously, we just add. We've already added him, but we just add Kali Linick in that situation because that would make the most sense, wouldn't it? Yes, it would. All right, waiver wire. Who has been added? Who are the trends to be added? Who are the guys that have been dropped across fantasy leagues? Let's talk about that now. The most added player, number one, was Juice McBride up 30%. You've got to add him until Jalen Brunson returns, which I don't know when that'll be. Smart ad to add him. People added Oshay Abaji. Mm, talk about that later. Grant Williams was added. He went back to the bench today. He remains a fringe player only. Gaz Trent up. I think Gaz is, with all the guys out at the moment, as much as I don't like Gaz's game and his fantasy appeal, he is a rosterable guy. Jabari Walker, yeah, look, again, struggled in the last one, but Grant's status is unknown. Aiton's not likely to play. I'm totally fine with adding Jabari Walker. And Contavious Caldwell-Pope, up 11%. He returned uh, today from that one-game absence. He's fine as a stream guy. That's where he sits. I said on this one, this is most added. That is an incorrect graphic. It's the most dropped players. Number one there is the winner soldier, Max Struess. The Cavs are in a little bit of trouble injury-wise because no Donovan Mitchell. They lost Evan Mobley today as well. I get adding, uh, dropping Struess, but if he's available tomorrow, you can add him back in. 
or stream him in at least. Uh, Taylor Hendricks down 14%, totally reasonable. Corey Kispert was terrible last game. He's down 10%. I'm not sure I would have pulled that trigger that quickly. With Marvin Bagley out, I think they go a little bit smaller, which gives Kispert more. Aaron Neesmith down 7, Bruce Brown down 7, and Jordan Goodwin down 7. I don't think I would have dropped Neesmith considering they played today, but I get it. Brown, maybe there's some extra minutes that come his way, but he's injured as well. So that's okay. And Jordan Goodwin, all you can do with him is when you see that he starts or he's not inactive, then you stream him in. But, you know, when does that happen? That's At this point, that's uh, it's pretty tough to figure out exactly when they're going to um, exactly when they're going to announce that or have that be the thing that happens. Let's talk games. First one, was your Orlando Magic uh-huh, and the Charlotte Hornets? We go into Charlotte. There was a change for the uh, Hornets. Big Dick Nick Richards returned. He started. That meant that Grant Williams moved to the bench. Still no update on the mellow ball, of course. We know that Cody Martin and Seth Curry are out for a while. The Magic at the win, 101-89. Good for them. That's a good win for Orlando. Wendell Carter Jr. putting together a strong run of games. I still don't buy him as a must roster guy, but 12-9 and nine with a steal is solid enough. Cole Anthony stepped up with Markel Fultz out. Now, Markel Fultz will return tomorrow, but they have listed both um, John Isaac and Gary Harris as questionable in the second half of a back-to-back. Anthony had 14-3-3 three three with two steals. Isaac was great here, 11-6, and six, triple one, 18 minutes. Can't trust him, though. And Bunkero had 22-5. and five. It I put this guy on the buy-low show. The buy-low bump did not hit today. Franz Wagner, eight points on 36%. Missed his only free throw. Didn't hit a three. His three-point shooting continues to be... I don't even... It's rancid. He missed five. He was shooting 15% over the last two weeks coming into this game. And then he went 0-5. There is going to be a gigantic turnaround for Franz at some point. Don't lose faith. Jalen Suggsy Suggs had some foul trouble, so he only played 20 minutes. 4-4-3 and three with a steal. He just should be rostered. For the Hornets, this is what I thought we would get more of. Not that he had gigantic usage, but Trey Mann played 34 minutes with 18, 6, and 4, two threes and two steals. We've got to roster him. And the same we have to do with Vasily Misic, who played 29 minutes, 21, 5, and 4, two steals, 53%, 15 attempts, 29 minutes. While Martin's out, while Ball is out, we roll with Misic. Brandon Miller had 18 points in 38 minutes on four threes, but it wasn't as successful for Miles Bridges, and some might say it was terrible. Seven points in 36 minutes, 19% shooting, a wrist contusion, which he returned from. Is that something that they might sit him down for? Hmm, we'll find out. 7-3-3 three, three with two steals. Nick Richards didn't do anything. 2-4 and four in 27 minutes, but I do think you can hold him. While Williams had 9-2-3 in 33 minutes. That's, uh, that's not good, obviously. It's Grant Williams. He's fine as a stream guy, but not a must-roster guy. And i tell you who's not a must-roster guy, but it's really close. Davos Bertans. What's going on? What year is this? 14 points, 4 threes, 6 rebounds. I included him on the Sunday stream show. Okay? If you're looking for some threes for a guy that's available everywhere, you might want to look to Batans. And he's been amazing. Now, that is the chance or the opportunity there for maybe Poku to get some minutes, but maybe not also. Batans, a really solid three-point streamer at the moment, which again, is just not a sentence that I really thought I'd be saying this year at all. Today's episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. That is what brings home the winning trophy. And it's also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything that you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed or power or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber and not cash. With all the parts that you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit is only available to US customers. Okay, so game one in the books. Second game is Boston and Cleveland. What uh, an interesting game here. Kristaps Porzingis returned from his one-game absence. That meant that Al Horford moved to the bench. And then slamming Sammy Merrill. He got the start with the winner soldier, Max Struess, out. And the Cavs, out of absolutely nowhere, come through with a late uh, fourth-quarter surge led by Dean Wade to get the win 105-104. Did not, um, did not say that coming at all. Uh, at all. So... Um, on Boston, Porzingis was great. 24-9, three blocks, three assists, three threes, 50% shooting. Lovely game. Unbelievably good game. Holiday, 12-4-5 with two steals. That's great. 
Tatum, 26 and 13 on 38 minutes. Yeah, not bad. It's pretty, it's good. It's really good, obviously. The shooting, not ideal. Well, Derek White, we talked about Derek White on the buy low, sell high, and someone left a comment. How dare you, how dare you um, put that jinx on Derek White heading into my playoffs the last time you did that? He had a stinking game. Is this a stinking game? Three points? It's not quite stinking because he did have six rebounds, seven assists, and four blocks. It's not ideal, though. And Jalen Brown, coming off his big game against Golden State, had 21, 3, and 4. The bench, nothing there. This is why you can't really just hold Al Horford all the time. 7 and 5 in 20 minutes. You only can use him when he starts, really. For the Cavs, no Mitchell, no Struess. And then they lost Evan Mobley. 23 minutes for Mobley, 4 and 6, 4 assists, 2 steals, sprained his ankle. He left the arena on crutches. They said it looked like a golf ball. There is zero chance he plays tomorrow. Um, and, and I would suggest that that is probably a week or so, minimum. It didn't look good. So last time, remember, we have a sample of this, of Mobley being out for a long time. They will start Dean Wade. Sorry. Um, Celtic destroyer Dean Wade, who went crazy here. 23 points, six dribbles, eight rebounds, two steals, 73%. He will start. He's also not this player. So don't look at this, because this is all one of those ones that can trick your brain. You go, well, Mobley's out. Wade will start. Look how good he was. Must add. He was like a 14-team league-ish sort of guy when Mobley was out last time, and I think that's okay to look at him. And you can definitely stream him because the Cavs have a really strong schedule coming up. But we've got to be realistic about our expectations for him. Also, be primed for some big Jared Allen stuff. 21-12 and 12 in 35 minutes. Dracaris Levert had 10-4, and 4, 5 assists and 3 steals. Add him for now while these players are out. And Okoro, I don't mind an out of him if Struis remains sidelined. 16-4-1 with two blocks. Slam and Sammy Merrill got the minutes, just not the shots. Six points, two threes. 29% with a steal. If you added Merrill, if you added Okoro, you hold while Mitchell and Struess and now Mobley are out. George Nyang's the other one I'd look at. He had nine points with three threes. I think I'd look at Wade slightly above Nyang, but I don't feel supremely confident in that either way. The next game up, the Miami Heat knock off the Detroit Pistons 118-110, the final score here. For Detroit, Jalen Duran, 14-10, and 10, nice game from him. And Simone Fontecchio off the bench, 29 minutes. Just sneaking back up to start his minutes now. 22 points with five threes. He's not much more than a points and threes guy, but back to 30 minutes makes him at least marginally intriguing. Not not a terrible ad. Not the best ad. Cunningham had 23, 4, and 8. Rough shooting night, but some overall good numbers there. While Isaiah Stewart played 36 minutes. He had 13 and 6. I still think he's a fringe 12-team league guy, not a must roster, not a must drop, sort of in the middle there. Asar Thompson played a lot of minutes again, and we love that. The production was just not good. 9, 6, and 2 with two blocks. I would hold. Well, Jade and Ivy, only 29 minutes. Now, I do like Ivy still. I just don't like how he gets used on this team. That makes him a hard hold for me. 16, 2, and 4, steal, block. It's fine, but yeah, it's not that good. Quentin Grimes was out. Sasser and Fournier barely played. Um, we went to a, at least a tighter rotation, a nine-man rotation. Monty Williams didn't know what to do with himself, playing only nine blocks. But it does help guys like Fontecchio to get that extra playing time. Still no hero, still no love for the Heat. I don't know when Hero's coming back. Jimmy Butler played 37 minutes, 26, 6, and 8 with two steals. He shot 54 from the field and got to the line 11 out of 12 times. An amazing run. He's really killing it at the moment. Duncan Robinson, we just keep rolling him until Hero returns, and then we give it a game and see what happens. 18 points, four threes, four assists. His resurgence this year has been amazing. Caleb Martin had 15 and 6 with three threes, while Hami Huckers had 11 and 6. Martin is ahead of Huckers to me in terms of priorities, but they're not high priorities. Like Martin's okay to stream and Huckers is a 14-team league guy. Nikola Jovic got ejected. He had eight points in 21 minutes with two steals while Rogier struggled with efficiency, 17 points on 17 shots, but he did bring in seven assists. We got 11 minutes out of Haywood Highsmith in this one also. They're also signing Paddy Mills and waving Drew Smith. Not that Mills is going to have any sort of an impact, but also DeLon Wright back out of the rotation. Not a guy that it seems like they're going to play each night, which is um interesting, I guess. It's a little interesting. All right. Let's go on to the next game, the fourth game of the day. It was the Hawks taking on your mates, the New York Knicks. The Knicks, of course, were without the burner, Jalen Brunson. And unsurprisingly, they did start Juice McBride. Now, Juice McBride did not play all 48 minutes. He, you know, Tom Thibodeau's not insane. He did that last game, but he had time to sit back and adjust and um, and look at his game plan and, and work out a better way to, to run the road. What's, what's that? What's that? Sorry. So, sorry. I played 46 minutes, sorry. So I got two minutes break. My mistake. The Hawks win 116 to 100. Jalen Johnson was huge here. He'd been sort of 
trending down a little bit, but this is awesome. 26, 9, and 7 on 71%. He's not going to win most improved. I think he should, but he won't. DeJounte Murray had 21, 9, and 6 with four threes, and the depressed penis, Sadiq Bay had 17 and 9 in 36 minutes. Bay just continually is the, that guy who's like your 12th best player, always. Hunter, 22 points. For some reason, this guy can't miss anymore. 64% shooting, but he still can't do anything else. Three rebounds, zero assists, one steal, zero blocks, and was bad from the line. Remains a 12 team league guy, but obviously still low upside. Capella had 13 and 9 in his 25 minutes. We've still got no Trey Young, still got no Anyeka Okongwu. Bad night from Bogdanovich as well. Five points on 17%. He's bad. He had two steals and four assists, and I still would be holding him. For the Knicks, McBride. He played 46 minutes. He had 11 points on 27%. Cannot shoot, but Thibodeau loves him. Nine assists, one steal, one block, and three threes. While these guys are out, we go with it. Now, Shake Milton did sign with him, but he didn't play. He could eat into McBride's minutes, but Brunson could also be back next game. But I don't hate the ad of McBride because it doesn't feel like Brunson's going to miss a huge amount of time, but I think he could miss a couple more. Josh the Hitman Hart, another 43 minutes, another bad shooting night, but 14, 8, and 6, two steals, two blocks. Keep rolling with him. He is going to drop off at some point, but good numbers. And then we're seeing Precious Atua's minutes continue to fall and fall and fall. The production's okay, but he only played 24 minutes. 15 and 6, steal and a block, 88% shooting. Hartenstein, 20 minutes. 5 and 6, a steal, two blocks. Um, the, that's one of the big questions in fantasy, isn't it? What do you do with Isaiah Hartenstein? And it's hard because if he plays 30 minutes, he smashes the numbers. Like, he's unbelievably good. But I don't know when that's coming. And you, this is an individual thing. If you're in the middle of a playoff week, you probably just have to move on. If you're in a situation where you might lose, you might need to move on. As good as he is, I don't know when it's coming. So she said. Dante DiVincenzo had 21, 4, and 6 in his 39 minutes. He continues to play really big minutes and big usage. Shot 29%. And this team is really struggling with everybody out. Jericho Sims played a lot, 26 minutes. He had 4 and 9. We're not rostering him really anywhere. While it was good minutes again for Bogdanovich, 31 minutes. He's getting minutes over at Chura at the moment. That's worth noting. 19 points with four threes, but shot poorly. Brings nothing else. He's a points and threes streamer. And that, realistically, uh, is about it, I would say. Um, let's go on to the next game. What is the next game? Next game is the uh, Philadelphia 76ers taking on the Brooklyn Nets. And we had uh, we had a lineup change in this one as well because Tyrese Maxey is now in the concussion protocol. So he was out and they started Cameron Payne, not Kelly Oubre. Payne was ill before the game and we didn't know that he was going to play and then he did play and then he started and then... We found out after the game that actually he got pulled mid-game because he was ill. Again, we didn't hear that. They just said he couldn't keep going after the game. Nick Nurse said, yeah, that's why I played Jeff Doughton is because Payne was too sick to continue. So that's got to put his availability in doubt for tomorrow. Maxi is no, I'd say there's no chance that Tyrese Maxi is playing tomorrow. And there's got to be an element of doubt on Kyle Lowry on the back-to-back as well. So is it Jeff Doughton time? Like, I doubt it, but I doubt in it. But maybe, I don't know. They're running out of guards pretty quickly. Uh, on this team. The Nets win 112-107. Lowry played 36 minutes. He had 14, 2, and 5 with four threes. Absolutely streamable, unless we hear that he's out. Ubre, 36 minutes, 30 points, 6 rebounds, 4 assists. Shot 20 times. That's a lot, but there's no one else to do it on this team. He's a rosterable guy at the moment. Payne had 15, 3, and 1 in 23 minutes. But now I don't know that he's going to play tomorrow. And Budrick had 13, 3, and 4 in 28 minutes. Buddy here, what a, what a weird tenure in Philadelphia. He can't do anything again, even though everyone's out now. Harris had 18 and 9 in 37 minutes, while Mo Bamba continues to start for some reason. I don't know. 12 minutes for him. Four points. Don't need to worry about him. But Paul Reed was not good in this one either. They went to a lot of Nick Batum at center. Reed played only 19 minutes. 5, 2, and 2 with two steals. If Reed plays 26 a night, he's a must roster guy. If there's the potential that he plays 19, he's not. Now, I don't really know how to read this because in his three games off the bench, it's been 27, 27, 19. The game before as a starter was 13. It's a little all over the shop. So if you're in a shallow format, if you're in a points format, you move on from Paul Reed. If you're in a 12-team category, well, that's going to depend a bit on where you sit in your matchup because 28 is more than enough to be an easy top 100 guy. And it happens sometimes, but obviously not every game. And that element of doubt is a problem. That leads you to concerns with like, how do I trust it? And I get that. Again, if I've got a level of buffer, I will hold. But if I don't, it's fine to move on. You're not missing out on a top 40 guy. He's not that good. He's not, he's, not, he's not really that good at all. For the Nets, no Cam Thomas. 
No Ben Simmons. I, I don't think Simmons is coming back anytime soon, honestly. Dayron Sharp was out with a wrist problem. I think he might miss a couple more this week. And then they lost Cam Johnson after eight minutes. Johnson is going to have some scans. They play three games in four nights, Thursday through Sunday. Zero chance Cam Johnson plays all three of those games, um, which was annoying because he was just sort of getting back into business. But that opens up stuff for other guys like Dorian Finney-Smith, who had 20 and eight with four triples on 73%. Is he a good player? Not particularly, but the opportunities are huge now. And the same goes for Dennis Schroeder, who had 22 and eight on 58% in 34 minutes. Opportunity minutes usage is all going to these guys because everyone's not there. Mikhail Bridges was... Slightly better, 15, 6, and 4, but shot only 33% again. And Claxton had 17 and 10 with four blocks. I want to share something that someone, one of the users of Basketball Monster said, and it's it's a wild thing. He's like, talking about Nick Claxton, right? Apologies to this guy. I'm not, this is not a negative thing that I'm saying. This is, I think, just a wild thing. He's like, man, I really want to see Nick Claxton play with a good point guard, right? He's like, okay, look what he's doing. If you play with a good point guard, it'd be awesome. I go, he just played with Kyrie Irving and James Harden. He played with Kyrie... 12 months ago in February and Harden was the year before. But that feels so long. My point is that, that feels forever ago. Do you look the start of last season, Kyrie Irving was Nick Clarkson's point guard. How crazy is it? Two years ago, he was running with James Harden out there, but it just doesn't feel like it. It feels like that was 20 years ago, but it was literally 12 months ago, 13 months ago that Kyrie was playing with Clarkson. That is crazy to me. So anyway, Clarkson, 33 minutes. Bates Diop got some of the backup minutes so to Trenton Watford with old mate Dayron Sharp on the sidelines. Big game from Lon Walker as well. 19 points in 30 minutes. This is the most stereotypical Lonnie Walker line I've ever seen. Except usually a Lonnie Walker line will be 44% shooting. He had 19, 4, and 1. That's just what he does. He scores. He does nothing else. And you require him to be able to shoot really well to provide any value. And I don't want to trust that. Like, I don't want to trust it at all, basically. All right, what do we got to talk about now? I've got to talk about this, don't we? Because today's episode is brought to you by, not by eBay Motors. Today's episode is brought to you by Better Help. Better Help, sometimes we all need that opportunity to get something off our chests. Big or small, certain things can really start to get to you. Like, for example, you might have been sitting at the top of your fantasy basketball standings all season. And then you get to this week, the playoffs are here, and you lose Donovan Mitchell, and then you lose Evan Mobley, and then you lose Larry Markin, and then you lose Jalen Brunson, and then Miles Bridges turns in a stinker, and then it's all over, and everyone's just falling all at once. Yeah, it can happen. It's annoying. And getting that off your chest to someone in your life who's unbiased, it can be helpful to be able to not process that stuff, but focus on things that are also a little bit more important, because we all have things that are more important going on in our life that are more important than our fantasy teams or our sports teams or whatever. But it's good to get that stuff off your chest and release that pent-up frustration again to focus on the things that are more important. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be flexible and suited to your schedule. Visit betterhelp.com slash LockedOnNBA to get 10% off your first month. That is betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash LockedOnNBA. All right. Let us go on to the next one. We've got the uh, the New Orleans Pelicans in this one taking on the Toronto Raptors. This one was not particularly close. The Pelicans get the big victory. There was a change. Yucca Perta was out. We talked about that earlier. And Kali Olenek started in place of the big Austrian. Let's talk... Um, Let's talk Pelicans first. They win at 139-98. That is an absolute drubbing. Zion only played 26 minutes, 16, 8, and 9, steal two blocks. His assist numbers are flying at the moment. He's doing a lot more points, Zion. And Trey Murphy went crazy, 34 points with 10 triples. He had a steal. He shot 65%. He is on fire at the moment. At some point, this is going to cool off. And it's all based on really high volume shooting and high percentage shooting. And there's value in it. I just don't trust that as a long-term thing. Uh, Herb Jones... Only 25 minutes, but still, again, ridiculous shooting. 60%. He had 17 points, five threes, two steals. And Valanciunas only got the 20 minutes, didn't start the second half, had 10 and 10. Eh, it's not ideal, is it? Ingram, 12, 3 and 6, while McCullum had 11, 4 and 4. But they just didn't need to play these guys very much. We got Murphy a lot more minutes, while Jones and Brandon and Zion and CJ all sat and didn't play as much. Alvarado had five points with six assists and three steals. He's a nice, interesting, deeper league stream guy. And Marshall had 11, 7, and 4 in his 20 minutes for the Raptors. Let's talk about the big fella, Kelly Olenek. He started, and this is why we want 
to know all about Kelly Linick. This is why we say he's a must roster guy. 15, 6, and 7, two steals, two blocks, 28 minutes. Uh, you can't, you have to roster him. There's no decision about this. Gaz Trent had 16 and 3 with four threes. Everyone's fallen around, fallen down around him, so go for it. Because Oshai Baji, who had started in place of um, Scott Barnes, well, he got hurt himself. Now, he was terrible before he got hurt. He had three points in 15 minutes um, and yeah, played. Well, he, he left, he got ruled out a minute or so into the fourth quarter. He had three points with three rebounds, zero assists, zero steals, zero blocks. So I'm not going to sit here and tell you, yeah, I told you he was bad. I did tell you he was bad, but like maybe he could have done more if he was available to play in the fourth quarter, but he don't need to roster Oshai Abaji. Get that garbage out of here! It was a bad game from the prestige penis as well. Grade A dick. Two points in 27 minutes on 14%. I like that he played 27 minutes. If you want to drop him, I get it. But also remember this. When you drop Grady Dick you don't wipe off this performance and this performance doesn't necessarily carry into the next game. Does that mean he's going to be a 2.15% shooter in the next game if he, in fact, like starts for Agbaji? No, it doesn't. So I'd probably like to, to hold and see what happens. That game's done. It's in the past. The minutes are encouraging. But he also, you can move on. He's not a high upside guy. Rowan Barrett. Um, what is going on with Prime DeAndre Jordan here? One of five from the line. He had 15 and six with two blocks, which is weird as well. Shot 50 from the field, but continues to be a horrific overall category league player. 198th over the last two weeks because he's just got so many deficiencies. Uh, what else happened here? Oh yeah, better talk about Javon Freeman Liberty. Bulls summer league legend. I think he played four minutes for the season on his two-way before he got converted to a full-time contract and they had 13 points in 18 minutes. That's what he is. He is a volume scorer. And this team is losing guys. No Barnes, no Brown, no Pirtle, no Abaji. Freeman Liberty is a point guard. Liberty. He might get some um, backup run. Deeper leagues, you want to pay a little bit of attention here. This game was that much of a blow. I thought we got Mamadou Gay playing three minutes and Jemias Ramsey playing five. That's how desperate things were. And 12 minutes to DJ Carton. Good for him. One point in that uh, in that time. And just as I'm recording this, two bits of news just dropped. One relating to the Raptors. Jakob Pertl, and I talked talked about this earlier, about it was weird that he was going to see the specialist. I worried about ligament damage. Yeah, he just had surgery on his finger to repair a torn ligament. They say he's out indefinitely. You know, that's that's done. Really. That's season over. So again, we go back. Kelly Linick must roster player. Pertl's season is over. For all intents and purposes, like it's just, it's not happening. He's not coming back. The other one that is officially out for the season that just dropped as well, Josh Richardson. Um, trying to rehab the dislocated shoulder. Didn't work. Shoulder surgery, done. Bad news. That, I won't say it's bad news, but that's the same situation as Julius Randle. Randle's not having surgery at this point, but it hasn't been ruled out, which is also a little terrifying. But Pirtle, surgery, that's year over. 100% that's done. Josh Richardson, actually officially done for the season. Season over for Joshy with the torn shoulder ligaments. So, yeah, if you're on the fence about old mate Kelly Linick, get off the fence. Get off it quickly. This uh, Raptors team is about to go full, like, full nonsense. They are going to go full nonsense very, very quickly. Um, all right, that will bring us on to the next game of the day. This was the San Antonio Spurs. They were taking on old mates, the Houston Rockets. In uh, in Houston, of course, there was a change to the lineup. We we didn't know whether Victor Wembanyama was going to play in this one, but he did. Uh, Julian Champagne returned, and that meant that uh, Malachi Branham moved to the bench. Champagne started, but like, to what end? What was the point of him starting when he barely uh, barely played in that role? The Rockets get the win. 114-101 was the final score. Wemby played 31 minutes. He had a quick trip to the locker room before halftime, but he returned. He looked a little bothered with a hip problem, so just watch that. He only had 10 points on 40%, so not good there, but 11 rebounds, three assists, two threes, and seven blocks. Even on his bad games, he puts up good lines. Branham had 20 points. That's two big ones in a row from Branham. We'll just keep an eye on that, especially for deeper formats. 20 points in with four threes, and Vassell played 40 minutes. 22, eight, and three on 47%. Really solid game from the horse as well, Calden Johnson. 18 and 6 with three threes. I still don't think you need to consider him must roster, but that's pretty solid, and especially in points leagues. While Sohan, 15 and 8 with three assists. Both of those guys, Sohan and Calden, are guys that I think you could look at as fringe 12 team guys, scheduled 12 team guys, more value in points than categories, but definitely not must roster. 
Champagne scoreless in his 10 minutes. Trey Jones only played 21. He had 4, 4, and 5 on 29%. I would not drop Trey Jones, but that's not a good game. And Zach Collins had 6 and 6 with two blocks. Get that garbage out of here! I say that only because there is zero reason to be holding Zach Collins while Wimby Nyama's playing, but Wimby didn't look quite right. So if you do have Collins and you've waited all this time, incorrectly, I might add, but if you have waited all this time, maybe just hold to see if Wimby pops up again on the injury report. Maybe just hold. For the Rockets, the delicate dancer had been down a little bit, Alperen Shingu, but he just blew him away. 45 and 16 with two threes, three assists, five steals and a block. Massive field goals as well. What a huge game. While Freddles Van Vliet had 21, four and 10, four steals and five threes. They are huge, huge games. Cam Whitmore went bananas, 19 and eight. He did it in 20 minutes. Now, you can't trust this, obviously, because including this game, over the last two weeks, he's 247th in 19 minutes. This is a great game. It doesn't happen anywhere near enough. This is not because, well, Tari Eason's out. It's not. It's just he does these big games occasionally, and you can't really plan for them. Big minutes again to Jollibee Jalen. He played 39 minutes, 23, 2, and 3 with a steal. That actually puts him way back into 12-team discussions. If he's playing 39 a night, that's easily a 12-team guy. We just He was on the way out. He was like being played 24 minutes a night and getting benched. Now, he's the guy that built everything around, apparently. I don't know. Stinker from Jabari Smith, two points in 25 minutes. He'd been playing well, and then he did not. While Amen Thompson had two points with two blocks in 19 minutes. You cannot roster Amen Thompson in 12-team leagues, I don't think. Get that garbage out of here. Dylan Brooks went scoreless, but he did have two steals in his 36 minutes, and he is not also a 12-team league player. Let's do the next game. The Indiana Pacers finally looked more like the Indiana Pacers smacking down on the Dallas Mavericks. 137-120. Tyrese Halliburton. Okay, let's go. 19, 6, and 11 in 32 minutes. You hope for a little bit more, but 11 assists. W. 54, 53% shooting. W. Scoring 19 points. All right, let's go. Hopefully this kick starts him. Siakam had 13, 13, and 6, and Nembhard had 10, 3, and 5, which is all right. It's nothing spectacular, but it's okay. Streamable. Miles Turner had 20 points in his 28 minutes. And Neesmith, I think you can drop Neesmith. Get that garbage out of here. Six points with two steals in 22 minutes. Just not happening at the moment. And with TJ McConnell doing what he's doing, not sure how much we need to worry about Neesmith. TJ played 18 minutes, 13, 2, and 7. He's top 100 over the top 80 over the last two weeks in uh, 20 minutes a night. If you're looking for assists... Without hurting your field goal percentage, there is literally no bomb better than TJ McConnell off the waiver wide. Now, I'd still prioritize guys like Olenek, obviously, Vasily Misic or Trey Mann and guys like that. But at the moment, McConnell is an unbelievable rosterable, streamable guy when the schedule suits and when it makes sense. Now, he's not going to always do this, but he's doing it now. Ben Matherin, 19 points with absolutely nothing else. Shout out to Nick Young. 19-0-0 with zero steals and zero blocks. He did hit two threes, but he was bad from the field, and he's just not a rosterable guy outside of streaming in for points. That is all you can do with Benny Math. For the Mavs, let's talk about the center position because you'll be very, very quick. I know you will. And I know I can see it already. I'm foreseeing what is happening in the chat below of the live premiere here. Daniel Gafford's back. Ah, I don't know about that. Gaff played 21 minutes, which is a W. He had 16 and 10 with three blocks on 100% shooting. All great numbers. Unbelievable good numbers. I don't know that I care that much though. Because I'll tell you why. All right, that's good. Derek Lively got two fouls in about the first two minutes. So Lively stayed down at under 16 minutes. He went scoreless and had one rebound. Kleber only played 15 minutes in this one. Uh, he was also scoreless. Both of those guys just struggled. And Gafford was playing well. It's still a three-man center rotation. With Even on a game where both the other centers were dreadful and Gafford was good, he played 21 minutes. All that means is that if Lively's playing well, or Kleber's playing well, or Gafford's slightly off, He's not sniffing 21 minutes, I'm guessing. So I'm not rushing to add him again. If you add him, you don't get this back onto your into your lineup. And I don't, nothing here suggests to me that, well, now that he's going to start and he's going to play 25 and it's all back to normal. I don't see that being the case. Doncic had 39, 10, and 11, 43 minutes. Ugh, he's playing so much, man. And PJ Washington played 37, 20 and 7 with four triples steal and a block. Good game from PJ. He's playing pretty well. The minutes are strong. If he's getting 34, 35 a night, that's enough for 12s. When he plays 30, that's when you get iffy with him. Irving had 23 and 7, and then there's just a bunch of nothing. 13 minutes for Tim Hardaway. What is going on? Get that garbage out of here. He's lost confidence, and Jason Kidd's lost all confidence in him. You know, heading into the season, this is what I thought was going to happen with Hardaway. Hardaway was having these discussions at media day saying, nah, Jason's actually not spoken to me a single thing. Hasn't said anything to, be, to me about my role. I don't even know what I'm doing. Like, oh, well, that sounds terrible. And then he went red hot. 
And now he's back out of favor completely. What do you do with Lively? You consider him a stream guy only. Kleber's only a deep league guy, while Joshy Green had six points in 26 minutes. Disappointing loss for the Mavs. Great win for the Pacers to get back on track. All right, let's do the final game of the night. The Phoenix Suns and the Denver Nuggets. Uh, we go into Denver for this one. There was a lineup change. Contavious Caldwell Pope returned from his one-game absence, so he moved back into the starting lineup, and Christian Brown moved to the bench. Not a surprise there with that one. This one it did go to overtime. I don't know if I said that already, but the Suns get the win, 117-107. The final score on the Phoenix side, there was no Devin Booker and Grayson Allen, who'd been slumping a bit. He went absolutely bananas. 41 minutes, 28 points, 8 triples, 5 rebounds, 4 assists, and 3 steals. Allen is still rostered in only 65% of leagues. He's the 76th ranked player this season. I get it that it's points leagues probably because he's 131st there. But if he sits in a category league, you just got to roster him. Nurkic had some foul trouble, but still had 7, 12, and 6 with two steals and two blocks, while Durant, who was on the buy low show today, he had 35, 8, and 5 on 41%. Still not shooting perfectly, but that's better. Beal had 16, 6, and 6, and that's passable, while Royce O'Neal, the Basmati man. This is why I'm never excited about Royce O'Neal. He's had a couple of good games, no doubt. But played 39 minutes, he had 8 points, 5 rebounds, and 6 assists. He shot 33%. While um, Booker is out, I've got no problem using O'Neal. When they are healthy, I don't think you can. Eric Gordon had 4 points on 14%, and that, my friend, sucks. Also, Bol Bol. Get that garbage out of here! 2 points in 13 minutes. For the Nuggets, KCP was great. 38 minutes, 11 points only, but 3 threes, 5 rebounds, 3 assists, 2 steals, and 2 blocks. Shot 67%. He did everything. Now, obviously, he doesn't do that all the time, but that was great. Murray had 28 and 7 with 9 assists, while the big fella, Big Chungus, had 25, 16, and 5 in his 44 minutes. Michael Ponder slowed down a little bit, but 40 minutes, 20 and 7, while it was a stinker from Aaron Gordon. 7, 3, and 3. 30% from the field. Missed his only free throw and didn't get a defensive stat. He'd been playing pretty well. That was not very good. But you don't really need to do anything, I don't think, with any of that. So yesterday, one of the worst outings you could ever have for the streams of the day. But today, we bounce back in a huge way. The 10-team stream of the day was Kelly Olenek. 15, 6, and 7, 2 steals, 2 blocks. What a W. The 12-team cat stream of the day was Trey Mann. 18, 6, and 4 with 2 steals. Holy W again. The 14-team cat stream of the day was Andy Nampard. And this was mid, but 10, 3, and 5 with a steal. Totally passable as a 14-team stream guy. And then your 16-team stream of the day, who's just honestly a 12-team must-roster guy, is Vasily Misic, who had 21, 5, and 4 with two steals. Roster percentage still really low. You just got to grab him. You got to grab him. Yes, the two-week game, the two-game week is coming up. Doesn't matter. The points league stream was Kelly Linick, 43.7. That's for Yahoo. And for ESPN, it was Kelly Linick, and he had 48 fantasy points. I believe they call that a clean sweep. The monstrous line of the night. Who was it? Well, there were a couple of options. Um, a couple of European blokes sitting at the top of the list, but we are going to go through all of our 17 steps because the delicate dancer, Alperen Shingun, gets it. 45, 16 rebounds, 5 steals, great percentages, destroyed Wemby. Huge stuff from Shingun. Your waiver wire line of the night, the best performer who's available in over 50% of leagues. So Grayson Allen does not qualify but Dean Wade does. The best Wade in Cavs history had 23 points with eight rebounds. Don't get super excited. Again, it's that thing to watch for. Mobley out, Wade goes bananas. Oh, Wade must be the must roster guy. Eh, sort of. We've seen Mobley be out for a month, six weeks, whatever it was, and Wade was not this. So have a look at it. Stream for tomorrow. 14 teamers get all over it, but that's about it. Your young gun of the night. Well, the first player that we looked at, the monstrous line of the night, was Shengun because he put a smack down on Victor Weminyama, and Weminyama is still the young gun of the night. He only had 10 points, but he had 11 rebounds, 3 assists, and blocked 7 shots in what was considered a down game. And then lastly, your dud of the night. Could have slid Aaron Gordon in here. He was very close to it, but in the end, we do go with Franz Wagner. 8 points, 3 rebounds, 2 assists. The shooting continues to be Completely terrible. I do think that it is going to bounce back. That's why I put him on the buy low show today, but not a good game there. So let's look at the top six players of the day. Your number one, obviously, for category leagues is Alperen Sengun. Next behind him was Luka Doncic. Number three was Grayson Allen. 
Number four was Chris Aspozigas. What a day for white guys. You don't see that too often, were you? Shingun, Doncic, Grayson Allen, Christos Porzingis at the top of that list. Van Vliet comes in at number five, and Jim Butler in at number six. Your top uh, six guys rostered in under 50% of fantasy leagues. Number one was Dean Wade, followed by Trey Mann and Vasily Misic. Mann and Misic, 12 team league must rosters. Finney Smith comes in next. Three games in four nights. Johnson may be out. Don't mind an out of Finney Smith. Duncan Robinson should be rostered as well. And then Simone Fontecchio, who's getting some nice points and nice threes. Bit of a stream guy, more of a 14 team league player. Lastly, we look at the top six players in Yahoo Points Leagues. We go to Alperen Sengun, followed by Doncic, Porzingis, Kevin Durant, Fred Van Vliet, and finally, the headmaster, Jamal Murray. Just some quick takeaways here before we go. You've just got to add Kali Olenek. Got to add him. I think Juice McBride is worth a look. I don't know about Brunson. I don't know about Milton. Vasily Misic, we've got at least two weeks where Cody Martin's out, so we go with that one. I think you could drop Jakob Pertl. I don't think he's returning this season. And I think you can be okay dropping Aaron Neesmith. Weak part of the schedule for the Pacers. He's struggling with his minutes. He's struggling with efficiency, struggling with volume. You might be okay to hold him, but I don't think you necessarily have to. And that's sort of what we're looking at with that. And that brings me to the end of this show. Tuesday's game's done. Injury carnage all over the place. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that like. Don't forget to ring the bell. And don't forget to be a double banger. Leave five-star reviews. Share it with your friends. Blah, blah, blah. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.